Hey everyone, Equalo here, and this is Nintendo Entertainment System, or is it? Now you may remember from my last video that I said I wanted to keep the exterior of the case as close as possible to the original. Well, here's how that turned out. So the good news, I was able to wire the power and reset buttons from the original case to work. It took a fair amount of modification, I had to unsolder the original button layout and board, and use modern button modules, because the original took up too much space to fit with the motherboard. But as you can see, the raised section in the middle I did have to cut out completely. This looks awful, and if anyone ever picks it up off of where it's sitting, they'll immediately know that it's not a real NES. Thankfully, who do you know who's actually going to come to your house and pick up your retro game console to make sure that it's authentic? And it's not all bad. From a functionality standpoint, there's actually a little bit of a give and take. The extra gap on the bottom actually allows better airflow to help cool a lot of the components inside, which is a notorious issue among NES PC builds. But I won't lie to you, removing this much of the base leaves the overall structure a lot weaker. If I pick it up, I can just feel it flexing underneath its own weight. So one potential solution I've been thinking about is to add some kind of reinforcement to fasten across the gap and help strengthen it. Now if you were going to be making an NES PC build, I would actually recommend to go with some kind of integrated graphics or APU option, because not having a graphics card taking up the extra space in there would actually allow you to avoid having to cut out that middle section, and you could leave it a lot closer to the original. Especially if you use some kind of low form factor cooling solution, like what I have here with the Noctua NHL9. That would give you enough space to where you could likely get away with making a lot less modifications. All right, enough with the integrated graphics. You came here for one thing and one thing only. To see me push this to the limit. I have in my hands here the NVIDIA GTX 1660 Super. And I am going to find a way to fit it in here. So we'll go ahead and insert it in here. Alright. So we need this card to sit flat. That's why we got one of these. A riser cable. This will allow our GPU to sit flat and we'll have a little bit of room to move it around and mess around with a couple different layouts. So with this sitting here, I think we're actually going to be okay. But I had to cut out a good portion of the cartridge slot at the top. This doesn't really make any difference visually unless you have the cartridge slot open. So I was willing to make this modification. And with all these modifications, it just barely doesn't fit. So at this point, I basically gave up. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. And you're not up. really fine, you just can't. <coughs> I started looking at other low form factor cases that I could buy just to put the parts in so I could at least have some kind of PC build to use, and I didn't really see any other options. But just as a last resort, I ended up messaging someone who I've talked to before on Reddit about PC build advice, just to kind of see in case he might have an answer for this. It turns out he had the solution all along. So if I put a space between the top and bottom case, and place something in between, I will actually have just enough space for all of the parts I wanted. So I went ahead and screwed some motherboard standoffs into the top case, and they actually fit perfectly. I explored a couple different ideas for what material to use to fill the gap, and landed on using a clear acrylic sheet, and then decided I would give it a frosted look so that you couldn't see all the components on the inside. Now there's a couple different directions I could take this. I could either leave the frosted finish and have some kind of RGB lighting from the inside that would give it a newer look and it would obviously be a modern build. Or I could paint it black, which would be a little more in line with the aesthetic of the original console. Lastly, I could try painting it to match the base, 
This would be a lot harder, but it would leave it looking pretty close to the original NES. So go ahead, leave a comment, let me know which direction you think I should take that. If you like this video, give it a like. If you want to see more of these, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, I've got more coming on the way. Thanks so much for watching.